Welcome back. The lack of red zone touchdowns were a main reason for the loss at Michigan, but the lack of touchdowns allowed redshirt freshman Nick Freeland to kick an IU record, tying four field goals in a game. AJ Shoup has more on the golden leg of Nick Freeland from Michigan Stadium. After a tough loss to the 23rd ranked Michigan Wolverines, there were still some positives that the Hoosiers could take back with them to Bloomington. One of those positives was redshirt freshman kicker Nick Freeland, who converted four tough field goals in a stadium full of 108,000 screaming Wolverine fans. It felt good to make four, especially on the road in an environment like this. I just try to think about it as little as possible. I'm not really thinking about anything, just, you know, just step up and make the kick. And I can't really hear anybody when you're out there. It's kind of my own little zone. I think he's, he's done a really nice job for a, you know, he's a red shirt freshman. And, uh, he, you know, through the first four games, he's done a good job. He's done a good job with the kickoffs. But I thought all in all, he, he did well. Nick played great. Uh, you know, he's, he's played good for us all year, so he's got to continue kicking, and uh, that's part of the game. The Hoosiers failed to capitalize in the red zone, which gave Freeland the opportunity to tie an IU record with four field goals in a game. It feels great, especially to get that many opportunities. I was telling somebody older, I mean, somebody else earlier, I, uh, we've kicked 12 field goals this season, and last year, I think Austin only kicked 17, so, I mean, that's a lot for only four games. We didn't capitalize on uh, red zone opportunities, which we need to work on a lot. Um, can't set up field goals every time, so something we got to work on. The Hoosiers love to see Nick Freeland kick the ball through the uprights, but they would love it even more if it came after touchdowns. From Michigan Stadium, I'm A.J. Shub, Hoosier Sports Night. The Indiana volleyball team opened up their Big Ten season Friday against the number eight ranked Michigan Wolverines. Ashley Benson led the team with 12 kills and five digs, but was it enough for the Hoosiers to come out on top? The race to 25 was on at University Gym. Elizabeth McGrath has more. Friday night at University Gym was quite a show for your IU volleyball team as they fought hard against the Michigan Wolverines. Tonight they, they weren't ready. I think they were a little intimidated, which I'm kind of surprised because we prepared so much for Michigan during the week with film and, and walkthroughs and things like that. But I think it, it, that's part of being young. We have to find some leadership that's going to get them ready to play earlier in the match. Despite freshman Whitney Granato leading defensively with the career-high 12 digs, IU dropped their Big Ten opener three sets to zero. I've coached a lot of schools and none were as good as this and, and as good at conferences and so I, I love that part of it. You know, I mean it is a challenge, but we have to take it as an enjoyable challenge and and push us out of our comfort zone to get better every day. The Hoosiers play Michigan State next, another top twenty team in the country. We're gonna play against all Americans, we're gonna play against national champions, and so they're gonna have to figure it out. Every day they have to get a little bit better and figure out where that fire comes from to play at this level. From University Gym, I'm Elizabeth McGrath, Hoosier Sports Night. After a hard-fought effort on Friday, the Hoosiers were back at it again Saturday, this time facing off against number 16 ranked Michigan State. IU found themselves more evenly matched against another young squad like the Spartans, but did not back off at any point in the game. As coach Sherry Dunbar has said, no one in the Big Ten is going to give away anything, and the Hoosiers need to fight for every win. Back in the university gym, Amanda Cohen has more. Volleyball, a game of broken noses and broken knuckles. Fortunately, this game did not result in broken hearts. Underdog Indiana took a win three sets to one against Michigan State. I don't know that they expected much from our team, honestly, but uh, that was part of our motivation was to come out and show them that we deserve respect and that we earned it. I think that they thought that we were just going to roll over and let them take the game, but obviously that in the end it didn't happen for them. Knowing that uh, we were expected to lose this in three and hearing different things from parents talking to our parents and team their team talking you know, up in the training room and stuff and just talking down about our team really got us fired up. It was really important to me that we come out with kind of a hunger tonight. And it wasn't about who we were playing or anything. It was more about us getting that competitive edge and feeling that edge and wanting to earn respect nationally um, than about, hey, we're an underdog tonight. Let's go out and beat Michigan State. It was about us playing to our potential, I think, more for us. Honestly, I think we just felt like we needed to come out tonight and prove something and take a step in the right direction for our whole program and just come out and win. We're really scrappy as a defensive team. and. You know, we, we've come a long way for um, putting the ball away when we need it. I think we definitely have a stud in Ashley Benson. Uh, she's one of the best players in the country. 
but I also think we have a great balance of hitters, uh, defense, and passers, and we're utilizing our freshmen the best we can. At times we have three or four freshmen on the court, so I love our youth and our future ahead of us. I think we utilize offense mostly because, I mean, most of the time there's only um, one or two blockers up, and when there is two blockers up, there's a hole, and we just hit the ball as hard as we could, and we usually got a kill. We really fed off energy tonight. I think um, we came out and everyone stepped up their game. Everyone played hard. Everyone did what they needed to do, and I think we're just an all-around good team tonight. It's great that we have a win, but you got to start getting hungry for Purdue. It's the biggest rival Indiana has. And so, and I know they're going to get up for it. It's a dogfight every time we play them. It'll be sold out at their place, you know, 3,000 people. And so it's about, for us, like moving on, thinking about the next match, not being satisfied with just beating Michigan State, but thinking about how are we going to beat Purdue now. It was a proud night for the Indiana volleyball squad. By the end of the night, they were no longer considered the underdogs. Great volleys, great chemistry, and great finishes led the team to victory. From University Gym, I'm Amanda Cohen. Who's your sports night? The 13th ranked men's soccer team opened Big Ten play over the weekend with a huge 1-0 win against Wisconsin in Madison. Sophomore Will Bruin scored the lone goal in the 56th minute of the game. This was the first meeting of the two schools since former IU player and coach Todd Yeagley was named Wisconsin head coach last December. The Lady Hoosier soccer team had a weekend to forget after losing two games. Their first loss came at the hands of Northwestern Wildcats, who shut out the Hoosiers 1-0. This was the first time IU has gone scoreless since October 10, 2008. That four-team game span over two seasons is the longest span IU has gone without scoring a goal since the 2001 season. The Hoosiers then lost to Wisconsin in a 3-2 shootout in Madison. Now field hockey. Unfortunately for the Hoosiers, they could not pull off a victory this weekend, losing 5-1 Thursday at Miami of Ohio and losing 3-2 at Ohio State to finish their weekend in the not-so-friendly neighboring state of Ohio. Junior Musta Mutemba, redshirt freshman Morgan Fleetwood, and redshirt sophomore Brenda Mulgee scored the three goals over the weekend. The name Alex Martin has been a staple on the show this year when talking about the men's golf team. This week, Martin continued to impress after a sixth place finish at the Ping Golf Week Invitational. Martin was in 40th place after the first round, but managed to climb 34 spots over the weekend. The team, however, finished in last place at the tournament. The women's golf team was a bit more successful over the weekend, finishing in seventh place at the Lady Northern Invitational up in Badger Country. Laura Notka led the Hoosiers in the tournament, finishing in a tie for 18th place with a score of 9 over par. Coming up, we will give you an in-depth look at Tom Crane's speech to Hoosier Nation. And you'll get to know women's volleyball coach Sherry Dunbar as she goes one-on-one -on -one with my co-host. All of this and more coming up on Hoosier Sports Night. 